Bienvenidos, welcome. I'm Nido Foodie. Today is YouTube's first Basque burnt cheesecake cooked in a Dutch oven outside in a field. Stick around and I'll show you how I do it. So this is an easy recipe whether you're doing it outside with a Dutch oven and charcoal or using a spring pan. Uh, recipe's the same, 400 degrees inside or outside. Pretty much everything's the, the same. So if you have one of these, don't have one of these, you can do it in a spring pan. But I'm gonna do it outside in a Dutch oven. Smooth it out the best you can. I kind of like the rough texture on the outside, but. I've been asked for this recipe and I almost give it up and I thought you know what they can watch the video and like and subscribe and do all that jazz and get it so well with that button that up put this to the side and we'll get going with the ingredients prior to this I've been dealing with the cold temperatures and suddenly boom like that we're up in the 70s now I'm having to deal with the warmer temperatures but with this recipe there's a couple of uh, things to remember the the cream cheese you'll need two pounds of cream cheese and it, they the cream cheese will need to be at a room temperature as well as your eggs six eggs at room temperature uh, growing up listening watching cooking shows listening to my mom cook that when you cooked with eggs, eggs were always at room temperature and the milk was always ice cold, was one of the standards I grew up uh, listening to. And one tip on the cream cheese, that when you take it out of the refrigerator uh, to let it come to room temperature, that is the time to unwrap it. If you wait till it's at room temperature to unwrap it, it's kind of like trying to get a sweater off of a hog, which is kind of difficult, but not as difficult as putting the sweater on the hog. And don't ask. Uh, so anyway, we'll break that down, get it softened up a little bit. And if you have a hand mixer, doing this in the house makes it a lot easier. To that, one and one half cups sugar.
You can tell it's starting to loosen up a little bit. Now one and three quarter cup of heavy cream. So I made this Easter Sunday. We've been invited over for dinner, Easter dinner. Made this and took over there. And my sister-in-law gave me one of these. Said, "Hey, that'll make it easier." Huh? Just kidding. And I don't know if my boys have even seen a hand mixer like this. This is what we had growing up. Still pretty thick. When we start cutting the eggs into it, well, that'll give your arms a workout. This is what we had as a kid growing up hand mixer like this. We do have one in the house that was I think made during the Reagan administration. Okay let's start getting some eggs in there. It's important to do one egg at a time helps keep it from separating get that incorporated in there then we'll move on to the next egg now if you're doing this with a hand mixer in the house it's super quick about 10 minutes and you're done Egg number six. Now let's see if the hand blender will work.
Okay, so one teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon of vanilla extract. Hey! And I try to cook with things that, you know, readily available. So you probably don't have vanilla extract like this. This is vanilla extract that one of my sons made. And so this is so vanilla, it tastes like chocolate. I mean, it's that, that strong. Hey! And, uh... So this has been sitting with the vanilla beans for a couple years. So this pretty strong stuff, but just use the regular vanilla extract. Now the next measurement is very unusual. One quarter cup and one tablespoon of flour. Yeah, if you watch some of the other recipes of this, they talk about sifting it. I've sifted it, I forgot to sift it, done it both ways. Didn't really see any difference. So if you wanna sift it, sift it. We'll just do half at a time and mix. Make sure it's straight down the sides. I'm waiting for someone to make a hand mixer that's battery operated. Or makes an attachment that fits on my porter cable drill. This recipe is so good that even if it's not perfect, it's still good. Now we're ready to cook. A little bit thicker, somewhere around pancake batter. So I'm gonna cover that and uh, get the coals ready. We're looking at 400 degrees. Uh, so I'm gonna do 16 coals on the top, eight coals on the bottom. In your oven, 400 degrees, I have a oven uh, thermostat because I don't trust the thermostat on my oven and at 400 degrees in the oven you're going to need to take a peek at it at about 50-55 minutes maybe even pull it out at 55 minutes that's where I usually do uh, in the Dutch oven working for 400 degrees and at 40 minutes we're going to take a peek and I know I say if you're looking you're not cooking but this time we're going to take a peek at uh, 40 minutes because this will probably raise the lid of the Dutch oven. And, uh, and I'll show you what to do when that happens. So, be back in a second and uh, we'll get cooking. So flatten that out on the bottom the best you can. doesn't have to be perfect. And in case I didn't say, this is my 10 inch shallow. And the spring pan is a 10 inch. So it fits both of them. So you can do it in the house if you have a spring pan. So this is ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and pour that in there and you can see the consistency of it.
and I picked up my stuff too quick. Knock out any bubbles. Okay, my coals are ready and uh, set that aside and we'll get the coals on and we'll be ready to go. So I have eight coals on the bottom, 16 on the top, and you can see that I've kind of kind of evened them around out instead of just putting them around the perimeter. Uh, and we are looking to basically make the curtain and the carpets on this brunette make it brown uh, so if you make this make sure you tell people you're making Basque burnt cheesecake just like playing pool call your shot let them know that it's supposed to look that way uh, but you know if you're making pizza biscuits rolls bread it's given that they're supposed to be golden so on this call your shot, tell them you're making Basque burnt cheesecake. Let them know ahead of time or they'll look at it and go, wow, you burnt the crap out of that one. So I'm going to set my timer for 40 minutes and on this recipe, uh, I will be back here at 40 minutes. Usually I'm in the house, alarm goes off, then I come out. But I will be here at 40 minutes. Well, it's been 40 minutes. Let's take a peek. One thing you bring that down so you can make sure not to get any ashes in there. Okay, that looks a little bit darker on camera than it is. See, we got a little bit of jiggle. That's what we're looking for. So the color, I don't want to cook that. Uh, anymore so what I'm going to do is going to take the coals off put the lid back on finish the next uh, well now about 10 minutes cooking the bottom and we should be set to go so that's why we wanted to check it at 40 minutes so we can take the heat off the top and if you're doing this in your oven of course in a spring pan you wouldn't have a lid so you wouldn't uh, start looking at it to about 50 55 minutes but uh, since that's right up against the lid, and you can see now why I didn't put all the coals around the, the ring, because they're considerable heat. Uh, so with that, I'm going to set the timer for another 10 minutes, and we should be set to go. So we're going to get this off the heat. It's been 10 minutes. Then I'm going to set this in the shade for a few minutes, let the pan cool down. So you can see how much the cheesecake has fallen, inch and a half, because it was pushing right up against the top of the lid. And that's what you're looking for it to do. So now we're going to transfer it from the Dutch oven to a serving plate. And you're probably wondering why I left the uh, parchment paper so far past this is why basically so I have a handle and this will help it to cool more because that uh, Dutch oven still too hot to the touch.
and as it cools it'll continue to, to collapse some more and the jiggle will come out of it Now I'm going to let it sit, uh, oh, probably a couple hours in a cool place. Let it finish settling down, cooling down. It's meant to be served at room temperature. And uh, so we'll be back after a while. And then we'll have some cheesecake, some Basque burnt cheesecake. So it's been a couple hours. You can see the jiggle's gone out of it. It has uh, settled quite a bit or fallen. It was pretty much full depth of a shallow 10-inch uh, Dutch oven. So we can get rid of one of those anyway. Meant to be served at around room temperature. And you get the uh, dark caramel touch of bitterness to counteract the sweetness of the cheesecake. It has a wonderful texture. It's not quite like any other texture you'll ever have, but it's definitely worth trying if you like to experiment. And my umbrella is about to blow over. But it's easy to make. If you overcook it a little, undercook it a little, actually a lot of the uh, YouTube videos on making this, they're undercooked. They may have their darkness on the top, but the center of it, they're undercooked. But it's still good. Great to eat, great dessert. My wife likes it with uh, cherry pie filling on top. So if you haven't uh, checked out my uh, mission statement YouTube video, check that out. It'll tell you why I cook what I am cooking for right now. And uh, thanks for watching, and thanks to all my subscribers. I'm about to hit 500 uh, battalion of subscribers. That's pretty cool. So thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you later.